Honestly, I'm kind of all for Predator movies to just be decided randomly by picking uh, a setting out of a hat. Like, oh, look, we've got Predator going up against pirates, going up against ancient Egyptians, going up against gladiators, even going up against this man, Andrew Tate. Genuinely, right now, nothing is stopping me from becoming Batman. My God, I hate him. <laughs> but anyway, the possibilities are limitless. going guys welcome back to my channel and time for another episode of luke's reviews on today's video the predator franchise has debuted a new entry over on disney plus so i decided to check it out here is my review of prey situated on the great american northern plains in the 1700s prey focuses on a comanche tribe and that of eager hunter naru wanting to prove herself to the rest of her tribe she begins to hunt something the likes of which no one has ever encountered before the fearsome and bloodthirsty Predator. Ever since Arnie covered himself in mud and dared the Predator to kill him, calling it one ugly motherfucker. The Predator franchise never really found that spark again. Predator 2 was largely underwhelming despite placing the Predator in a suburban setting. The less said about the Alien vs Predator movies, the better. Robert Rodriguez's Predators had potential but couldn't quite stick the landing. And the same goes for Shane Black's The Predator. But that ended up tying itself in knots because it wanted to set up more of an overarching story and universe. So praise be to Dan Trachtenberg who completely understood what this series is about and took it back to its survival roots. After making a splash with 10 Cloverfield Lane which was I think 6 years ago now, it is great to see Trachtenberg back making a real splash as a filmmaker and giving audiences a really exciting movie going experience. And it is a great decision to choose this time period setting because it allows us to see the Predator in a in an environment that we're not used to seeing it in. We've seen him go up against soldiers with guns quite a lot so now we're going back we're stripping it back to basics and it gives the film this primal sense there's this constant motif of predators chasing their prey and how that can change and fluctuate in an instant i mean it goes to show you can be the most fearsome predator and then in the blink of an eye you are helpless prey I also really dug the design of the Predator 2. It is nowhere near as technologically driven. It's a lot more primitive and beastly, and therefore the kills this time around are that bit more brutal. And trust me, there is an incredibly high body count here. But it's our hero as well who benefits from the film choosing to focus itself on those survival instincts. Amber Mid-Thunder plays Nauru, a member of a Comanche tribe wanting to prove herself as a formidable hunter. Now Mid-Thunder is just fantastic here. She gets the audience on her side early on, and when the fight really begins to hit, she emerges as one of the coolest badasses of the year so far. I, for one, cannot wait to see where her career goes from here. In terms of negatives, I will say that Prey has a bit of a slow start. When it kicks in and everything gets going, my god does it pack a wallop, but yeah, it just takes a bit too long to actually get there, at least in my opinion. Plus, some of the visual effects in the first act at least, they're a bit clunky. Now, one thing that a lot of people have been saying about Prey is that it should have been released in cinemas rather than dropped on streaming services. Um... I would have loved if that were the case. I, I would have given anything to see this film on the big screen because it does deserve that. However, I genuinely don't think that this film would have been anywhere near as popular as it has proven to be if it were released in cinemas. I think this film, Prey, uh, was, the, was the largest premiere that Hulu over in the States has ever had. Um, and has been trending ever since because it's easy access. Everyone can just jump on their streaming sites and watch it. 
if I'm being completely honest, if this film were released in cinemas, I do not think that it would have got to number one. Partially because a lot of people have fallen out with the Predator franchise, as well as the film being called Prey, the Predator's not in the title, so it wouldn't have had the initial uh, viewership. We currently are living in this streaming age, um, and I think that Prey has kind of benefited from that. Um, I don't I don't like the fact that that's the way it works, but yeah, I think it probably was the right call given the climate today that this were to go on the streaming sites. So overall, I strongly recommend Prey. If like me, you've been wanting the Predator series to go back to what made it so popular in the first place, then you will love how Dan Trachtenberg strips it down to just a primal survival hunt. Amber Mid Thunder makes for a brilliant action hero, and the action itself is pitch perfect, gory glory. So I'm gonna give Prey an eight out of 10. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on Prey. Let me know, have you had the chance to see the film yet? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And my question to you, I wanna know, what is your favorite Predator movie? Has Prey emerged as your favorite or is the original Predator with Arnie still up there? Let me know. But that is all we have time for today. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button. And if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.